In 2018, the UK government announced that they'll be creating more places for medical students to study in the UK. How they decided to carry that out was by creating at least five new medical schools. If you would like to know how this affects your chances of getting into medical school, or maybe the pros slash cons of studying at a new medical school, please stay tuned to the end of this video to find out. Hey yo, welcome back to my YouTube channel, The International Med Tech. <laughs> now, I'm sure you're wondering, why did the UK create so many new places for students to study medicine? In order to answer that question, let's go back to 2016. According to the Medic Portal, the NHS had a shortage of doctors in specialties like psychiatry, pediatrics, and emergency medicine. Now, the GMC, which is the General Medical Council, their solution to this issue was to help at least create five new medical schools in the UK. Now, the UK government obviously helped with this. In 2018, the government decided to carry out the plan by creating at least 1,500 new places to in universities to study medicine. Now, and this was even before the 2021 great inflation. Obviously, if you applied for medicine during that period of time, I'm sure you are aware of the great inflation, not only in medicine, but in every other degree. Now, just give you, you a little bit of news here, just to keep you updated. And I'm sure you're wondering what, what the names of these new medical schools I'll be talking about for a long period of time. So let's go into that. As you can see, I have collected a list of medical universities from the website Med School Genie, which shows the universities that have come into place since the year 2018. Also, have in mind that the five universities that were chosen, the five new ones, were, cre were created in places and areas where there was a shortage of doctors. I'm talking about I'm talking about places in like the Midlands. But without further ado, let's go straight into the list. Now, first up, we have Aston University. Their, their first cohort started in 2018. Next up, we have Anglia Ruskin University, which is only open for home students. Sorry, my international students, but it is like that it do be like that sometimes next up we have lincoln university which started in 2018 and they have the collaboration with the university of nottingham it is a bit confusing but anyway once you finish your degree at lincoln university you get your degree from university of nottingham you receive your degree award from nottingham so basically lincoln is kind of going to it's like kind of going to nottingham university for medicine except with lower grade requirements now most of the universities that i will name from this point on have something called a contingency school so what happens is that gmc which is like i said the general medical council they make sure that all the medical universities in the uk are of the same standard and everyone has to go through that rigorous check especially new universities so they decide that they'll partner any new university with an existing one just in case those new universities don't get that gmc accreditation that means that thumbs up that hey you're good enough to be in medical school so if they don't get that thumbs up um the their backup university would basically give their students the award or degree so that their students do, are not affected in any way so without further ado let's go back into the list in at number four we have the university of sunderland which started in 2019 their contingency uni is Kiel University and they only take in home students. So next up we have Edge Hill University, which started in 2020. Now the University of Liverpool will be their contingency will be their contingency university. Next up we have Kent and Medway Medical School. In 2020 they were created and their contingency university university is the University of Brighton and Sussex. Ulster University started in 2021 and they have the Uni of St. George's as their, as their contingency university. Next up, we have Chester University. Now, this one starts in 2022, which is in this, this um, September. And their contingency school is the University of Warwick. On the website, they're open to only international students as of right now. And that's the University of Chester. Before I go to the last university, you know we have to leave the best for the last. And that brings me to Brunel University, which obviously you know is my university. We're going to start in 2022, this September. Um, we were meant to orig originally start in, start in 2021, but we had some issues with COVID, so we had to postpone. 
and as of right now we're only open to international students but like i said check yearly and see what the school says because eventually they'll take on home students and our contingency school is the university of buckingham we also do scholarships here so if you like what i said about brunel please apply so you might be thinking that there are a lot more places to study medicine in the uk definitely it should be easier to get into medicine but that's not really the case and i'll give you an example let's take the year of 2021 for example as an example according to the medical school council there was an increase of 20.9 percent in applications to medicine compared to the year of 2020 and this was mainly due to the the great inflation of 2021 wow <laughs> the great inflation of 2021 sounds like a plague <laughs> um but anyway what what happened in this kind of situation was that universities had taken on more applicants than they could handle and the application process was very difficult because almost everyone had the right grades to get into medicine so universities had to be stricter for international students although they might have slightly more places you have to remember that after brexit some eu students can be now classified as international students so that would increase the pressure for very limited places as an international student if you would like to see more detail about how competitive it is to study medicine in the uk please check my previous video because i go into detail about that for those of you applying to study at a new university in the uk you might be wondering okay what are the pros and cons of studying at a new university well i'll go i'll go over some pros and cons for you but first off shout out to nilima who helped me with most of the pros and cons First up on our list of pros will be that their success depends on you. So that means they're going to put all their energy into making sure that you get the best treatment and get the right degree and graduate with the best grades possible. Because if you do well, they do well. The next one is that a new university also means that you have a newer curriculum. So that means you're up to date with any techniques out there and you get the most modern approach to studying that certain degree. And the third one would be that with new universities, it is slightly easier to get into them because they have a slightly lower grade requirement to start studying at the university. And what this means for you is that it gives you a better chance of applying, that is if you apply strategically. And my last pro for you is that basically regardless of wherever you go to to study medicine in the UK, it is going to be of the same standard because the GMC makes sure that every university that offers medicine is basically of the same standard. What's, what might differ might be that some have been in the game for a long time and some might just be starting. But I guess you, we all have to start from somewhere in it. So now let's talk about the disadvantages or the cons that you might face when applying to a new school to study medicine. The first one is that there is no mentor above you to kind of guide you or direct you on, on how things go based on their experience. But this is mainly if you are the first cohort, then yeah, you, you, you won't really get like a mentor. The other con as well is that you won't really get past papers like that because you're the first cohort and you don't have any other information out there to actually research upon and all of that. Especially in my case, Abruno, I'm part of the first cohort, so there's no past papers to actually read up on. But the, but the thing is that the way the university structured their learning program, you won't really need past papers because you'll be doing a lot of tests here and there. So basically, they've kind of thought about that, which is good. Yes, you'll be the guinea pig. It is what it is. Get into medicine and be the guinea pig. And basically, they'll do surveys and try and improve, but they'll learn from your year, your cohort. That's the issue. But no one can really do anything about that. And the other one as well is that the possibility of not being accredited by the GMC. Like all the universities that are listed to you that have contingency universities, which are their backup universities. I'm sure that might sound scary to you, but rest assured the universities are most likely to get the accreditation from GMC. So there's not much you can do about that as well. And the last con I have for you today is the fear of the unknown. You fear what you do not know. I'm sure most of you are like, should I go? Is it bad? I don't want to waste money. Trust me, at the end of the day, everything will work out for us that's what i pray for anyway so today's video was done for the students out there considering whether to apply to a new medical school to study medicine well i have done the research for you and i've given you the options and choices 
I suggest that whatever you choose to do, you should do it based on the options you have. If you have better options that suit to you or suit maybe your family needs and things like that or financial needs, then definitely go for that. So it's all down to the options you have. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it with somebody else that you think might enjoy it.